So you ready to shoot the intro? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Uh, wait. We've been locked in! Guess uh, we're doing it here! Do you want to shoot the intro here? Yeah. <laughs> That's a little different. Anyway, uh, hello Zoo Adventures friends. <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. Uh, we are in the foyer at the butterfly, the Kaleidoscope Butterfly Garden here at North Carolina Zoo. We thought for sure you'd like to see that. Um, it is open now. Um, and we'd love for you to have a chance to come through and visit. We're going to meet with Katie Hagen here in a second. Your Zoo Adventures team today, Leslie's behind the camera. Good morning, everybody. She says she has a couple things she wants to share today. So apparently you used to take care of butterflies. I, I mean, I did. I dabbled a little bit at my last job, yes. I think it's so cool. Uh, and I'm Steve, so it's awesome to see you all uh, here today. So we're going to, since we can't go that way, we're going to go this way yes. <laughs> and try to find Keeper Kate. Ooh. There's no way. Hello. <laughs> There's no other place to go. So we'll go, through, go this into the habitat itself. Let's see if we can find Keeper Katie Hagen. Oh, go through the magic thingy doors. Oh, here we are. I have not been here yet this year with the butterflies out and about. No, me neither. Keeper Hagen. Oh, there she is. I found her or she found us. How are you? Doing well, how are y'all? Doing very well, doing very well. Keeper Katie, some of you have met Katie before. Um, she's been part of a couple of butterfly episodes in the past. So thank you again so very much for your time today. Absolutely, of course. And we are here today. This is our first time, my first time. Leslie, have you been in the butterfly habitat yet? Not, uh, not, not this, this season? year. No. no, me either. So yes, yeah, excited. Well, I guess while it's been open. Remember, we uh, were here not so long ago for plants. And who was that? That was Katie. That was Katie. Yeah, right. Katie, right? Was that Katie? Not you, this Katie. Not this Katie. You're not oh, Katie? Oh, yeah, that was for Katie. I'm not playing okay. Katie. So we have, we have plant Katie and we've got <laughs> butterfly Katie. Got butterfly. Yep. What does butterfly, what else does butterfly Katie do? Just for fun. I don't, I don't know what she does here. What else do you do at the zoo? Uh, at the zoo, I also work at Streamside and Swamp. Um, and those keepers, uh, us as a team, we're also responsible for honeybee and butterfly. So we're kind of all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. You guys are all over the place. Yeah. And you go from cougar to butterfly. Yeah. All taxa, all sizes, keeps it interesting. Good challenge, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, fantastic. So let's get out, let's get the um, kind of the basics out of the way. Okay. Um, before we kind of go out and about. So about okay. about how many species do we have? Um, so currently I would say that we have probably in the range of 40 to 50 species. 40 to 50 species. Yeah, in here. as we move through the season, our diversity will increase. We've had oh, cool. as many as 85 species uh, in previous years. 85? Yep. Wow. And about how many individuals? That might be a really hard, difficult question, but about yeah, how many? Yeah, that's a really hard question. Um, so every week we bring in um, 300 to 400 new wow. animals. Wow, 400. Yep, and uh, so right now we've probably got, I don't know, on the order of a thousand? Really? Wow. Maybe, I gotcha. mean, we've been bringing in animals since late April. Late April? So, yep, we've got quite nice. a few. And we're taping this, I always got to cheat. We're taping this May 26th. Oh, who is so, I'm sure you know each individual animal too. So which I one is this? I know them all by name. So who is that? And this, this is a nice little group. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're not going to. Now, Leslie might be able to do it, but I don't, we're not going to. We're not going to go. That's there. Georgina. And... <laughs> now, the one thing you did tell us to do when we came in, you said, please watch your step. Yep. Why am I watching my stay, step? So, um... Couple reasons. Obviously, butterflies do like to land on the ground for oh. for a number of reasons. So yeah, we have to make sure that we're not stepping on anybody. Um, there is some water on the ground from yeah. where our Hort team watered all of our plants this morning. Oh, nice. Um, so some of the butterflies are on the ground uh, slurping up some water. Gotcha. And then if it was a sunny day, they would also be out here, spread eagle, wings spread wide, soaking up the sun. So they bask? They do bask. What other animals bask, Leslie? Uh, basilisks. <laughs> that's, that's not where we were going with that, no. that question, but we'll, we'll take it. Well, usually ectothermic animals, so your reptiles. Right, and, reptile. and, there we yeah. go. A little better on the answer there. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. But I hope you all heard my snort right. to my own joke. It was Leslie funny. <laughs> Which is, which is the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> so I find that interesting though. So during during the day, they're going to warm up. Yep. Just like just like an alligator. You take your, your, your swamp? Yep. 
so the alligators. Side, we've got plenty of reptiles yeah. and amphibians there. They all pretty much do the same thing. Yeah. Um, butterflies cool. actually, with the motion of their wings, they can produce some of their own body heat. Oh, really? Yeah. In, um, the, bo- in, that, in the body itself? Yep. Um, but yeah, wow. they like to soak it up from their, um, from the, um, environment. So okay. yeah, that's the easiest way for them to warm up, especially in the morning when you come in here as the sun pours in over the trees, um, you get a lot of them on the ground in the morning, soaking up the sun. Neat. And there's so many colors. Leslie is showing so many different varieties of, of there's real pretty greens and there's browns and grays and blacks and blues and yellows and whites. So many different colors. Do you see? Oh, look at that one over there. What kind of butterfly is that? Uh, that's one of my favorites. That's a malachite. Malachite? Yeah. That's really so some pretty. people uh, might know the natural stone that's called malachite. It's a green stone. Oh, fantastic. So I'm not sure which got their name first, the rock or the butterfly, but um, that's where their name comes from is that green color. Wow. Oh, Leslie, yeah. way up high. Can you see Let's them? see if we can get it. Not really. There's it's three little of them too up bright. There. There's three of them Actually, up there. One of them over there. One up there. The uh, the backlight is kind of making them just look like a butterfly. Yeah. Well, how about this one over here? Come hither, Miss Leslie. Because yeah, we cheated a little bit. We looked around a little bit. How about <laughs> that one? Can you get that one? Oh, I could probably get that one. <laughs> so that's a monarch. Yes. So we have non-natives and a few natives Correct. in here. Correct. Yeah, we have a few natives uh, that we get each year and typically monarchs are one that we keep all season. Nice. Um, so yeah. And is this how they arrive? Yeah, so they arrive in... I'll get out of the picture so they don't see me in the reflection. In the... <laughs> 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 they arrive in the pupal stage. So wow. in the chrysalis is how we get them. Okay. Um, and then we hang them here in the emergence chambers. Um, and oh, we carefully... Word. Yeah. Emergence? Emergence chambers. chambers. Yeah. Um, cool. So we can control temperature and humidity in there. Oh, nice. Um, so that they are under the proper environmental conditions um, so that they can emerge. Like, emerge it looks like well. this one up here just might have come out. Yeah. Can you see that one? Can you get that one, Leslie, up top? Looks like it's just coming out. Yes. Wow. Well, that was kind of fun. And, the, and these butterflies will be released out into the habitat once yes. they've what? So it takes them a little, when they come out, you can kind of see that animal there mm-hmm. um, is quite small. So it's they're going to hang, up. yeah, they're going to hang upside down and the gra- gravity itself is going to help draw those wings out. Um, they're going to start pumping those oh. wings a little bit to pump lymph and blood through their veins. Okay. Um, so they've got to take a couple hours to really fill out those oh, wings wow. and also harden up the wings, gotcha. um, which tends to take a little longer in, when they emerge in the morning. If they emerge during the heat of the day, they can usually be released a little bit sooner. A little faster. Mm-hmm. Nice. Gotcha. I think that I found this interesting. Study of butterflies. Lepidoptery? Yes. Lepidoptery. Lepidoptery. Um, someone, Are you a lepidopterist? I, I, I do not. <laughs> I, I'm not confident enough in my skills to take on oh, that title. But. <laughs> there are how many? I think, didn't she say 800 butterflies possibly? 40 to 50 different species? Yeah, and she's not a lepidopterist. <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break. It's uh, <laughs> It's been a learning curve, but this is year three. It's very enjoyable. There's yeah. so much to learn. Um, and it's it's been a challenge and it's been fun. So I definitely enjoy it. But I'm no, I'm, I'm not ready to take on that title yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We won't push you down that path. And lepido- I think lepidoptery has to do with their wings. Right? Yes. Their scale? It does. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. The Latin Whew. root is, uh, it breaks down to scaly winged. Scaly wings. Yeah. And that's because their wings, oh wow. So they, they bask like reptiles and they have scaly wings. Absolutely. Why yep. aren't they reptiles? <laughs> We're not going to worry about that question later. We'll get to that question <laughs> later. Monarch, oh wow. Actually. Leslie, right here. Just because they're natives and a lot of people love their monarchs. Of course he's exiting the uh, stage. Right here. <laughs> I do want to say though, so like the the view that I have right now um, is this really pretty. I don't know exactly which one it is. Maybe Sappho. you can help. Sappho long wing, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. You can kind of see as it's like moving its wings that it changes colors almost. Oh, it does. And and um, I think that's really cool with some of these. But those are like the little tiny scales, right? That they're all little different colors. So sometimes when they move, you can. Or when the wings move, you can kind of see the scales 
like iridescently change colors. Yep, exactly. And that's also why we try to be really careful when we're handling them. Uh, because those scales can fall off really easily. So oh. we've been trained to handle them properly. Um, and that's also why, you know, we're, we like to have butterflies land on people, but we ask that you not touch them because they are very delicate. Yep, um, that's fair. Yeah. I think what we've said in the past was it's okay for the butterflies to touch you. Yes. You shouldn't touch the butterflies. Exactly. That's a, that's a perfect thing to keep in mind. Got that? So okay for butterflies to come to you. Let's let the butterflies stay on the ground if I choose to do that. Yeah. Very cool. Gotcha. All yeah. right. I know well, we keep looking around. I did too. I'm like, oh, I don't want to step on anybody. <laughs> I don't want to step on anybody for sure. Uh, well, let's head over to the other side and we'll see okay. what's over there. All right, cool. I feel like we should have some nice music right here for everybody. <laughs> da, 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 da. You getting some good shots there, Miss Leslie? Mm -hmm. Some sense, really yeah, it's just neat nice to, stuff. You know, observe and take in their beauty. Very peaceful. This is really a pretty butterfly here. Is that the same one we've had over the Sappho? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I think they're my so favorite. Pretty. Yeah, that's a new species to us this year. We haven't oh, had yes. them yet, and we're very much enjoying them. Gotcha. So what flower are they on? You know, I am not plant, Katie. Oh, we already right. covered this. Right. However, I know that plant. Oh, you do know that plant. So <laughs> what is that one? That's verbena. <laughs> that's a verbena. Yeah. All right, cool. I know a few plants. I forgot that we had two Katie, a <laughs> plant Katie. Um, but, oh, but wait, we did an episode with plant Katie, right? Yep. Yeah, so go back. Uh, through the archives of it, you might be able to find something on Plant Katie here in the Butterfly Habitat, talking about pollination and pollination gardens. That was kind of fun. So the view I have right now is a really great view of the butterfly drinking. Oh, you oh, got cool. it all. You got it. Kind of. Nice. Through that proboscis, correct? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Science word, proboscis. That's how they're being, how pulling the nectar up. Um, but they don't taste with that, right? Don't they taste with something else in yeah, their body? Yeah, they do. So digital guess, what do butterflies taste with? What part of the body do butterflies taste with? Where are their <clears throat> chemoreceptors? Ooh. How about that? You know, every once in a while I got to drop one of those. Yeah, that's, where, a, that's a big one. Where are their chemoreceptors? What are they tasting? What part of the body? Katie, what part of the body? Their feet. Their feet, their feet. Isn't that crazy cool? They taste with their feet. Yep. I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I mean that, uh, yeah, we don't know what concrete tastes like, but maybe we would if we were butterflies. <laughs> I guess butterflies know what concrete tastes <laughs> like. Good. They're on there all the time. <laughs> but yeah, it makes sense. They've got to find the right plant to land on, um, oh. to know where to lay their eggs. Real, I, was, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So they're actually tasting the plants. Yep. To say this is it. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, absolutely. That is fantastic. So they taste with their feet, my friends. How awesome is that? Butterflies yeah. tasting with their feet. Yeah. And I saw, I've never seen this butterfly before, and I'm sure that, what is that? That is a rusty tipped page. Oh, of course it is. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a rusty tipped so page. So that is related to the malachite we saw earlier. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Now that is yep. kind of cool. They're in the same genus. What a pretty butterfly. What about this one right here? I like this one a lot. Let's see who you got there. Um, that is our one of our gray crackers. It's a cracker? Cracker? It's a cracker, yeah. <laughs> um, interesting name. That name comes from the fact that they do make noise. Uh-uh. Yeah. So um, I've only ever heard it when I've been in here alone by myself. It's oh, very quiet. That doesn't but happen you can often. hear them overhead, and it sounds like bacon um, crackling. So yeah, that is great. So yeah, butterflies can make noise too. Bacon crackling. Yeah, you'll hear you'll you'll hear the males sometimes um, overhead snapping like bacon. I wouldn't mind bacon crackling right now. <laughs> that is so if the neat. butterflies are making you hungry. <laughs> it's a weird thing to think about. Yeah. And then another monarch there. Yep. That one looks a little. How come some of them look a little? I mean, they don't all look the same. They all look. Some of them have their wings a little bit beat up. Some look like they're just brand spanking new. Yep. So we've got 
you know, tons of different age classes here. And we have plenty of older butterflies that live a little bit longer because, you know, we're keeping them in a predator free environment here. Oh, sure. Yeah. So these guys normally, um, you know, if a butterfly loses part of its wing or its mobility gets slowed down, a bird or another predator oh, is going to snap it up. Dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't happen in here. Nice. So we do end up with our older butterflies that look a little tattered. Very cool. But they still get around quite well. Interesting. Yeah. Leslie, do you know how many species of butterfly are in North Carolina? We are in North Carolina, Asheboro, North Carolina, at the North Carolina Zoo. Do you know how many butterfly species are in North Carolina? No. What about you? Lots. I, yes, I know, but only because you told me. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn to shine, so it's your answer to give. She just broke the fourth one. <laughs> Katie, how many have known. <laughs> butterfly species are there in North Carolina there based are. on your infinite knowledge? 175 species. 170. That's an amazing number. That is an amazing number. I'm glad you knew. <laughs> I just... Keep her, Katie. Yeah. There, there you go. Hold it You're, right on my face. Cut. Come back to that later. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? There's 175 species of butterfly in North Carolina. And those kind of numbers always blow me away because... Yeah. You see, you see swallowtails all the time. People see swallowtails. They see monarchs if they're lucky sometimes. They see little sulfurs. They see little skippers. Yep. And then to begin to add all those up. Yes. You have to be 175. Yeah. And I didn't ask about moths. Do you have, I don't have any idea how many moths there are. I don't I think know think there's more or less? I, I, there's that. more, I There is say. more? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What's going on here, Miss Katie? Um, so that is a plate of butterflies. <laughs> a plate of butterflies. Katie. Katie, leave the jokes to Leslie. I thought you were hungry. <laughs> leave the jokes to Leslie. Um, That's a plate. I love that. Yeah. Can you get up high enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so what's going on in that plate of butterflies? So we do, we provide fruit um, oh, as, do. yeah, as supplemental feeding opportunities. So um, we've got butterflies in here that prefer to go after the nectar in the plants. Okay. But we have some, I mean, the majority of those species on that plate are morphos. We know that our morphos are malachites. Um, okay. They love to go after the fruit. Um, that's another. Um, and the big one is the morpho, right? Yes, exactly. And Blue the, morpho. We've, we've met the malachite. Oh, yep. See ya. Um, so yeah, they all gather on there and, and soak up nutrients and water from the fruit as well. I see. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Good deal. I saw. Oh, there's another yeah, monarch, another and as monarch. soon as you point to the monarch, <laughs> They're disappears. On their way. That is so out. neat. Um, butterflies. Yep. They're here now. Yes. I don't see them in December. Yeah. Why? Um, sometimes you'll see them in December. Really? It depends. Yeah. On a huh. warm day. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, butterflies over, they can overwinter in a variety of ways. They can overwinter as egg, pupa, adult. Uh, so we do have native butterflies in North Carolina that overwinter as adults. Really? Yes. Um, I know offhand I question mark and comma. Are two butterflies that you those can are, see on a nice things. sunny warm december day so the, so the grammar thing <laughs> nice connection yeah the grammar <laughs> things last forever yeah they do <laughs> so question marks and commas are butterflies yes yeah look them up question marks and commas i've always thought they were punctuation marks. <laughs> well they are that as well <laughs> yes that's cool i did yeah. not i don't think i realized that, that yeah they, that they kind of do that as when they're out about and yeah. then some of them are egg and some are caterpillar exactly yeah they oh, overwinter right. in any of their life stages um here in north carolina and um so yeah they're all kind of doing doing their own species specific thing over the winter very cool um but yeah the adults they'll be out and about on a warm warm december or january day i don't think i've ever noticed but i've never looked yeah i mean i don't think i've ever just paid attention to it well question what you got so when they're overwintering is that like they're just out and about or do they like burrow? Like how, how, how does an insect overwinter? The adult, the, um, the butterflies, the adult butterfly? Any part, I Any guess. part. Yeah. Um, so well, yeah. I assume pupa would be, it would be like in the ground. Pupa would be in the ground. Yes. Um, and then the adults, they just, they roost in the trees. So they'll find, um, a nice leaf packed area in a tree and roost there. Um, and they can kind of hole up there, shore up there while it's cold out. Okay. Um, and then eggs, 
I guess I don't really know the eggs. Um, I I, I'm making a huge assumption because a lot of times they're tasting the plants. Yes. So I wonder if they're able to put the plants, put the eggs on the back of a plant that's going to last over the season. Right. Yeah, I would I would think so. Obviously, if they're going to overwinter as eggs, it's going to be on a plant that overwinters well also. Hmm. Yeah. And we can do an entire episode on monarchs. Yes. We can do an entire episode, but I think it's fascinating their lifestyle. Yes. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't, I'm not 100% sure. They'll migrate from here to Mexico or other locations. Yes. On the way down, it's several generations. Yes. So they're on the way down to Mexico. It's, you know, it, lay an egg, comes up, adult, lay an egg, adult, all the way down. So right. maybe three or four of those on the way down. Is it on the way back from Mexico to North Carolina? It's one generation? I, you know, I don't know. I'm not 100%. Leslie, do I you know I feel like that? I need to read up on that. I don't know either because my thought would assume that it would be the same there and back. Yeah, I don't actually, know. I yes, I would as well because they're all going to I just their... have a butterfly on my neck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I got a, I got a close-up view of it. <laughs> okay, good. I thought it was a butter. I thought it was a plant. I was just kind of getting, what is that? I, I touched it, I'm like, not a plant. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Yeah, I'm not ever sense sure. And again, I really don't know. So that might be something for you all to look up, Digital Friends. Yep. I know it's several generations on the way down. Yeah. And I just don't know how many generations it is on the way back. I don't, I'm not sure. And they're so long lived, right. too. I mean, right. if you think about adults that are making that full migration, I mean, they can live for on the order of a year. Wow. Um, so I, wow. would, I would think it's also That's numerous right. generations going Coming back. back. But I, okay. I need to research yeah, that. Yeah, I do not know at all. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. And I have, did find it amazing, because um, I did a little bit of reading before I stood for here, that some adult butterflies live like a week. Yes. And like you said, some of them can go nine months to 12, nine yeah. months to a year yes. as the adult. So sometimes it's quick. Sometimes it's can be that long, exactly. long time. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. I love it. Leslie, you want to show them some more pretty butterflies? While we're here, we might as well find some pretty butterflies. Yeah, let's, let's find some and have you tell us who's who. I was going to okay. say, yeah, could we can do a little, a little ID because little ID? Uh, I've been yeah. showing some of them and I'm sure people would want to know okay. what those are. Totally. Um, There's another one of those little... That's that pe the rusty tipped rusty page. Yeah, exactly. Rusty. Yeah. There's things. the malachite. Malachite there. I am not. I'm going to step back and let Leslie and Katie take over because they definitely know their butterflies. <laughs> Do you know this one up here? I. Yeah, that's a cattle heart. Cattle heart. Cattle okay. heart. Yep. Very cool. I might repeat just away. so they can hear me say it, so yeah. they can hear the word again. All right. Absolutely. Let's see if we can find some others. I did see a bunch over here, Leslie. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a pretty spot wingy type thing here. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorites. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, it's like. that's a cool guy. That's a blue frosted banner. Um, <laughs> not sure where the name came from. Obviously, <laughs> he's got orange spots. Um, but that is a those. That's a really cool species because they're sexually dimorphic, so you can tell the males from the females. Oh, that's sexual dimorphic. No, that's what that means. Sexually dimorphic. Yes. You can tell the males from the females. Okay, yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's a male with his six orange spots. Blue frosted banner. Blue frosted banner. And if we see a female, I'll point her out. Oh, fantastic. That'd be great. Let's try to get, what's this real big one yeah, over here? Yeah, that's a big one. So that is a, uh, I believe that's a giant swallowtail. We have giant swallowtails and we also have uh, king swallowtails in here. They're okay. a little hard to tell apart, but I think that's what a that giant. What would that one be then? Um, this is... I believe that's a king swallowtail. Well, I wanted to make sure you could see both. <laughs> good catch. Good They're very Much. similar. Very, very similar. <laughs> um, um, I'm counting. No I'm counting the spots on one of their wings to to tell the difference between the two species. So seriously, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. You have to count the spots. I yeah. have this one over here. What do you have there, Leslie? Julia, right? Yeah. Yeah, Julia. Julia. Exactly. So they do have names. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See if nice. you can find any more. Nice, nice, nice. I'm gonna sneak behind you, Leslie. I'm gonna come down here. See what I see, if anything. This one. I think that's a new one for uh, on our tour here. Who is that? That is, uh, that's a ruby spotted swallowtail. That's another swallowtail. Oh, yeah. And some of them are migrating up. Too, so it's gonna be a little bit. Yeah, it's a little. I think everyone's migrating up today because we don't have the sun on us. I think they're, so they're seeking to, some warmth. Trying to find the heat. Yeah. Of the day. Um, let's see. If I can find 
Oh, this is, he's almost camouflaged. That's another Malachite, though, yes. right? Yep. This is a Malachite with his wings shut, Leslie. Oh, you got How about one of this one up here? Oh, nice spot. That is a uh, blue banded purple wing. Blue banded purple wing. Yes. Wow. Crazy name. <laughs> Did you, I mean, you shown him the Malachite open? This is what the Malachite looks like closed, Leslie. Yeah, it's kind of orangey, right? I love that. It's so different looking. Yeah. The Malachite open is that real pretty green, and then this guy, when it's closed up, it almost almost has that um, leaf look appearance, leaf like appearance. Yes. Yeah. Most of most butterflies, you'll notice when their wings are closed, they tend to be uh, have more cryptic coloration on that oh. hind wing surface, and then they don't tend to show their flashy colors until they open up. Nice. Um, so a little bit of a, a camouflage tactic. Some camouflage there. going in there. I love yeah. it. All right, I got a question for you, Steve. What you got? Me or for Miss Kate? I mean, both. Either or. Okay. okay. <laughs> what is butterfly? What does butterfly mean? I like to call them booterflies. <laughs> butterfly. Butterfly? I, I, Steve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt this one to you. <laughs> uh, there's three thoughts. Booterflock. Let's see, you're close. When you say the word, when you say the word, this is a German thing, German phrase. Uh, in England, in English, they in old England, they used to think that butterflies were witches. And the witches were coming to steal your milk and your butter. And they would fly by. So butterfly. So that's another way. In a lot of the butterflies that are in England, remember this is a lot of naming happened from England and Germany and, and Europe. A lot of the butterflies over there are yellowish in color. So there were pads of butter flying. I'm, I'm not, I asked a question, get an answer, right? Gotta love it to do the research. Um, and the next, the last one, I'm not a hundred, it's a little after 10. So I hope when you've had your breakfast already and maybe you can semi confirm this. You maybe you can semi confirm okay. this. When a lot of butterflies first emerge from their pupas, the first liquid or poop that comes out is often yellow or a yellowish tint. Can you confirm or deny? I can tell you it's every color in the rainbow. <laughs> I was going to say. So the ones that were studied. Like, <laughs> and it, I would say like reddish brown. It makes a huge. Yeah, it can yeah. be red, rusty red, green, yellow. Okay. Yes. So maybe that one's not <laughs> as precise <laughs> yeah. as witches stealing your butter and milk. <laughs> right? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the, however, what I did find out is that it does not come from Flutterby. Okay. It's not an animal that flutters by because that phrase connected with butterflies didn't come until the 1900s. Okay. So we're pretty sure that it has nothing to do with that. And then, yeah, the butterflock, the butterflying, because they have the pads of butterflying, that's probably where a lot of it did come from. Okay. I have no idea if that's right or not, <laughs> but we'll share Someone it with can, you. How about let's give our digital guests a, some a assignment, uh, assignment <laughs> and if they can research and tell us then we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Nice. There you go. So yeah, we're we'll coming back one of these days in the comments to one of the other, one of the future um, episodes, or even go back on this one and watch it again and put a comment in. That'd be kind of neat to see what's going on. Well, again, we could stay in here so much longer. There's so many things to talk about, yeah. but I know you've got more things to do. We've got some places to run. Thank you so much, Keeper Katie. Everybody, oh, say hi to Keeper. Say goodbye to Keeper Katie, please. <laughs> bye. Thanks for coming. We didn't get to say good hi to you, but now they'll say goodbye to you. <laughs> and I promise you right now, you are saying goodbye, right, digital friends? Because you're so kind. And you're I so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate your time so much Absolutely. today, Katie. No problem. What an amazing day here at the Kaleidoscope Butterfly Garden at the North Carolina Zoo. Please come and check it out. Um, it is an added fee. Uh, I'm not sure the fee to this to the Butterfly Garden this year. Is it three bucks? Three bucks to come in the Butterfly um, Habitat, and it is well worth it. You have your time to come in and spend. If there's a keeper here, I'm sure they'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. There's a couple boards that I'm sure Leslie had shown you to get an idea of the butterflies that are in the habitat. So you can make that your own visual experience while you're here. We are so thankful that you tuned in today. Did you notice? No masks. So the zoo is open completely to you. Masks are recommended if you're not vaccinated, but not required. 
Still some limited tickets, so make sure you get online. Check the zoo's website, nczoo.org, to find out any information on any um, other new requirements that might be happening. Again, this is being taped on May 26th, probably airing the middle of April, I hope. <laughs> or middle of, middle of June. We're going back We're going in time. Back in time. <laughs> so middle of June-ish. So do check the website um, if you are planning a visit to the North Carolina Zoo. Thanks again from Steve in front of the camera. Leslie was behind. Thanks for joining us, everyone. So good to see you again. Y'all stay safe. We'll see you at the zoo. Bye now.